Hey folks, today I'm going to talk about 3D printer accuracy and I'm going to share this test jig with you so that you can verify the accuracy of your printer. Then I'll make a few suggestions on how to make improvements based upon your results. So if you want better print quality and accuracy, hit that subscribe button. Before I get into how to use this test print, I want to take a few minutes and I want to talk to you about the finish and fit of this box. If you're trying to fit some existing parts together or you're trying to 3D print and design some parts, then it'll be important to be able to understand how your printer functions and how accurate it is. It takes a little bit of manipulation to remove the cover, but nothing crazy, and it slides right on. The edges are smooth where it comes together on all four sides. This is actually one of my rejects but it's still a very, very good fit. So I wanted to show you that first before we get into the test jig. Okay, so I created this test jig to have dimensions that would make sense and that you could use. A calibration cube won't give you as much feedback as this uh, print will. So the outer dimensions are 100 millimeters, the inner dimension is 70 millimeters, and the center to center distance of the holes is 85 millimeters. I've created a position on the left here that is position zero. Then we go, I go by degrees. So 45, 90, 135, and so on around. In the Excel spreadsheet, I have a picture and giving you the positions so that you'll know where to plug the numbers in. So related to the holes, I used these two uh, drill shanks. They're pretty much new. They're in great shape and the dimension is solid and stable. So I just converted it to millimeters. These measure 6.28 millimeters. They're both very consistent and I used them to position them in the holes so that I would be able to measure. Now, they are a snug fit because we have to make sure that they're vertical when we're taking that dimension so that we don't make any mistakes. We're gonna take the dimension as close to the test print as possible because otherwise you could get some distortion and I'm, I'm forcing it right now. So just as an FYI as well, those holes, I pretty much made them size for size and then what I did after I took the readings because I wanted to find out what we're actually doing. And as you can see, that's snug and that is snug, but this is a brand new bit that I inserted it and I just took my finger and I just cleared the hole so that I'd be able to uh, put it in. I'm basically using it like a reamer. So one important detail that I need to mention is that I design in a fillet or a radius on every sharp corner in this print, including the holes, the bottom edge, uh, all edges have a small fillet radius integrated in. And it's because I don't want those edges to interfere with my print. The other thing about putting a small radius is that I find that the side that contacts the bed, you get a much better finish that way. Whereas if you leave it perfectly square, the heat tends to make the edge creep outwards. And I'm, I'm sure there's got to be a term for that, but I don't know what it is. If you know what it is, tell me in the, in the comments. I'd appreciate it. But that is something that I did to this box as well. You know, so I, I printed on this edge, but I made sure that I had a really nice radius all the way around so that I didn't end up with any sharp edges on it. So the bottom piece was printed on the bed in this position. The top piece was printed on the bed in this position. So the dimensions, I always start at the zero point. So I'm taking the outer dimension uh, this way, making sure that I'm well aligned with my edges. I don't have any sharp edges interfering with my measurement. Then I would go and do the inside dimension this way. And then I come and I will actually insert the drill bit shanks, making sure that they're in solid and that they're vertical to the part. And then I come and I measure across the shanks and I will be subtracting one drill bit shank diameter. Okay, so over here on the left, you're gonna see that it's 100 by 100 by 6.35 millimeters is the size. And then typically the quality, I'm gonna do a 0.2 layer height 
I'm doing three walls and I'm going outside to inside. Doesn't really make a difference one way or the other. The results seem to come out the same. So I'm doing four top layers and four bottom layers with one uh, top surface skin layer related to the monotonic. The infill, I'm doing 10%. The material, you guys will need to set this to the temperatures that work with the filament that you typically use. And the last thing is that, that I always do a monotonic top and bottom layer. So I've got the box checked, come down and I slice, and now I'm ready to print. All right, so you got the Google Sheet open. It's the 3D printer accuracy. And I got three tabs here down the bottom. The first one on the left is the positions, showing you the positions I described before with the engraving to the zero mark. The next one is where you're going to enter your print test results. The next one is for your print calculations. So if we come back here, all the blue dimensions are the ones that you will replace with your measurements. So we have a first print, we'll do our first print, we're going to make an adjustment, and then we'll do our second print. So when we're looking at the first print, here is where we're going to enter the outer dimensions. In this case, we're targeting 100 millimeters. So 0, 45, 90, and 135. You only need four dimensions in this situation. Uh, you come down, then we're going to do the inner. We'll do the holes center to center. Then we're going to do the thickness. And then we'll do the hole size. So if we actually look at these dimensions, you're going to see that that 100 millimeters comes to 99.7 on the first one. But the ones that are the most important right at the moment are the X and the Y. I can't adjust for 45 degree angles. So I'm going to take the average of these two and I'm going to focus for this example on the X and Y, the outer dimension. I'm not going to apply it to the other parameters. I will adjust for this and then I will see what the results are. So basically, if I look at 99.7 and 99.68, the average is 99.69. So I come over to the calculator, I'm putting in the 99.69, I'm putting in the requested size. These are values that you can change depending upon what you're doing. It'll automatically calculate out in this position. And then we're going to take this value, multiply it times 100, which the new size will be 100.31. So I could take that value and I come to Cura and I can come over here and I'm gonna type in, I'm just gonna round it out to one decimal place and then here and I hit enter. And so it's adjusted the size. So this is 100.3% increase in size on the X and Y, not the Z because I unchecked the uniform scaling box. The height came out very, very close in the Google Sheet. So looking at my test results, the target is always put next to the dimension that, we're, uh, that we are measuring. So the inner dimension came out pretty good. It ended up averaging out to 70 millimeters. And I cannot tell you exactly why. There's uh, shrinkage factors that come into play. It's like my printer is very well tuned, but you can see that it is not perfectly tuned. I mean, we're talking about 0.3 of a millimeter here. Then if you come down and you look, you see like we're off a little bit on the center to center hole distance. When you come down through the thickness, this thickness is very consistent and very, very close. I have zero complaints about that. The hole size is very, very close to the request that was made. It was 6.32, and you can see that it ends up averaging out to 6.22. That's pretty good. And depending upon what it is that you're doing, you can always enlarge your hole size a little bit to give you the forgiveness. So for some designs, changing the value for one of them in Cura or whatever your preferred slicer is by size or percentage can overcome the fit that you're trying to achieve. But in other instances, you're going to need to go into the design to adjust the actual dimensions of the items that you're trying to fix. If that is the situation, you can still use this table and spreadsheet in order to be able to modify those dimensions in programs like Tinkercad or Fusion 360 or some of the other 3D modeling software that's available. 
If you're interested in Tinkercad, HL Mod Tech on YouTube has some fantastic tutorials for being able to work with Tinkercad and to learn it very, very quickly. So check him out. If you have any questions, concerns, or comments, please leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and happy printing.